Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing really well. My name is Oli, I'm a junior doctor living and working in England, working in the NHS. Welcome back. Now what I have for you today is a really quick update on the UKFPO FPAS scoring system that's brand new for 2022. This is going to be most relevant for those of you that are about to start your final year of med school in September, but it will be, but it will be good knowledge to have for anyone in medical school because this stuff affects you when it comes to applying for jobs. Historically, your application score, the thing that decided what jobs you got, was calculated as follows. 50 points for the SJT, the Situational Judgment Test, 34 points automatically for your medical school degree, an additional 9 points available for your decile, so that brings us to 43, your decile being the ranking relatively within your year, relative to everybody else in your cohort at medical school. Then there were two points available for up to two PubMed indexed papers. And then finally, our five points left came from additional degrees. So that was three points for a bachelor's at 2-1, four points for a first or a master's, and then five points for a PhD. So as you can see, that gives you a total score out of 100, which is then used to rank everybody graduating that year. you like 5,000, 6,000 people who are due to leave medical school, ranks them all, and that determines the order in which they get given their preference jobs. This is, however, changing very significantly for those of you that are due to apply for your jobs in September. So those of you that will be joining me and becoming my colleagues in August 2023. So from this year onwards, the points for those additional achievements are being removed, namely the points available for published papers and the points for additional degrees. The baseline that you get awarded for your medical degree now becomes 40 points out of 100, and we're still maintaining nine points for the decile. So someone in the bottom decile will get 41, and someone at the top will get 50. And then the 50 points that comes from the SJT will remain as it is. We are therefore still working with a total of 100 points, which can obviously be used to allocate jobs in just the same way. Nothing about that system needs to change. So what does this mean for you guys and for medics moving forwards? Well, the first thing to say is that additional degrees will not be recognised at this very early stage in our training careers. The rationale here is that additional degrees are expensive, whether they are from previous study or they're from intercalated degrees that you would do while at medical school. And not everybody can afford to intercalate. To a point, it measures how much money you have. So there is some degree of widening access to careers from that. Now, I don't personally ever think that intercalating a degree just for the points was ever a good idea. They are a fantastic idea for developing interest in a particular area, but that's a huge amount of work for a very small number of points and isn't really what intercalating was supposed to be about. And actually, this is an area in which I'm in broad agreement, I think, because the abstract value of having an additional degree, which is the level at which this was measured, I'm not really sure that's that valuable for a new foundation doctor, primarily because we don't assess in any way what that additional degree actually is. Now, it may well be that you have a degree in biomedical sciences or the molecular biosciences or something that might be very applicable to medicine, but you could also have a music degree or a fine art degree or something. And I would argue that that probably doesn't have a huge amount of value for the practice of clinical medicine at that scale. Now, obviously, I'm not suggesting in any way that those additional degrees don't make you a more well-rounded person or that you don't find value and things that change your practice. But in terms of writing a person specification for what a new foundation doctor should have, I'm not broadly convinced that having an additional degree is something that would be necessarily desirable at that stage. Now, specialty applications are a very different question, and of course, they are still going to be recognised. I do think, however, the big central issue here, the unfairness of this, is for those students who had already made the decision to intercalate a degree and have already taken on that financial burden, in some part because it was perceived to be worth points for their foundation application. Those people are now simply being told sorry, this thing that you've already paid for and you've already done is now no longer worth points, even though we told you it was at the time when you applied. I think 
that is a very shady rug pull and this decision should have been delayed to allow every single cohort that could have intercalated at this point in time to get clear of the system before you apply that blanket policy. That's what I would have asked for. In a similar vein to degrees, the main problem I had with published papers counting for points when applying for foundation jobs is that there is absolutely zero assessment or quality control of what it is that you actually submit. The check was literally, does it have a PubMed index? Yes, then it scores a point. If it doesn't, doesn't score a point. What that means is that there is fundamentally no difference between a letter to the editor that was bashed out on a Saturday afternoon and an international randomised controlled trial. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting that medical students should go out and be involved in international RCTs. But my point is, is that we're not actually recognising anything specific about the work that anybody has done or trying to map it to any sort of curriculum. I'm not sure what the perceived value actually is. They're still obviously great if you want to apply for an academic foundation programme or for your specialty applications later, especially if you want to go on and be an academic or a fellow. But to be honest, I think having points available at F1 level for publications doesn't really do an awful lot beyond fostering a culture where it's okay to churn out lots of poor quality research to get PubMed indexes rather than trying to do actually good valuable work. And then lastly, let's talk about the deciles because now the decile basically sits as the only remaining factor over which you have a good degree of control, that is your academic performance. The SJT still accounts for a very large component, 50%, but is very well known at this point for being effectively a random number generator with very little in the way of predictive value. And it's incredibly inconsistent even between markers. This was a big topic of discussion at DMEC, Developing Excellence in Medical Education Conference, which I was at recently. And basically we all agreed that it was tripe. <laughs> and basically we all agreed that it was tripe. Like I say, personally, I'm still fairly convinced that the SJT is just a way of ensuring that rural district general hospitals that couldn't recruit by themselves in a marketplace continue to have a supply of doctors. Because as we know, given the choice, most doctors will gravitate towards urban city hospitals. Just with my education and recruitment academic hat on, this is actually one of the really major problems that they're having in America in their medical system because doctors gravitate towards big city centre hospitals given that that's where most people live. This is one of the things that's expanded scope of practice for both nurse practitioners and physician assistants as they are in America in an attempt to improve access for patients in rural areas. Yet, surprise, surprise, those same groups of people also <laughs> gravitate to city centre hospitals because those are the places that people want to work. So clearly this distribution problem is a massive one that nobody really knows how to solve. As I say, I suspect that the SJT is our way of doing that at foundation level. So ultimately, what will this change do? Well, I think we'll lower the amount of junk research a little bit, so that's a good thing in my book. And we will have widened access in some sense because of that reduced cost of needing to do an intercalated degree. Unfortunately, I think the side effect of this is that it increases academic competition between medical students, which we already know is a big problem, and we're still no further towards having other non-academic skills recognised by the system, and I'm unfortunately fairly doubtful that that will change anytime soon. So let me know what you think of these changes in the comments, guys. If you've got any questions, I'll try to do my best to answer them. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, subscribe, and don't forget to go and check out my website, olliburton.com, for more news, updates, and tutorials. Take care, and I'll see you next time.